Hello. In this talk, I'd like to present on some of our research into leaning-based interfaces as a way to try and improve virtual reality locomotion. So specifically, we designed a standing leaning-based interface Navi board and a sitting one Navi chair. And what we, in a nutshell, what we could find is that they really help to improve locomotion compared to a standard controller and almost reaching the level of free space walking. So this research was published as a TVCG paper and uh, is presented at IEEE Virtual Reality 2020. I'm Bernard Rieke and I work at Simon Fraser University in the greater Vancouver area in beautiful British Columbia in Canada, where I lead the iSpace lab. So one of the questions that has fascinated me for a long time is really how can we move effectively through virtual reality? How can we make this so it's natural and effective as if we would be physically moving through this? So how utilizing all the relevant sensory cues? And there's lots of amazing setups out there. Well, if you have the right budget, the right space, the right technical expertise and support to really make this work. But these are absolutely amazing interfaces, but they might not fit into everybody's budget or living room. So why not just ask people to walk? And indeed, there's a lot of research showing that physical walking is one of the most effective low cognitive load interfaces, especially for small scale travel. But it gets more tricky for longer uh, durations for longer distances when the virtual space is a lot larger than what you can physically walk in. So in essence, so you typically have a restricted free space walking area or, well, you have to spend a lot of money. So well, the challenge we set for ourselves was, well, can we simplify this? So is there a way we could design more effective virtual locomotion interfaces without having much of a budget at all? And ideally, while reducing disorientation and motion sickness, and ideally also while allowing for continuous and effective locomotion, just like natural walking, where you can also use your hands to naturally interact and communicate, which is really important. So how would we go about this? I mean, we know that physical rotations are absolutely essential for supporting effective human spatial cognition, spatial orientation, spatial updating, spatial awareness. Now, the good the news is that, I mean, pretty much all the latest, especially wireless headband displays, support this easily. So our research question here was how much translational locomotion cues we might actually need for efficient virtual reality locomotion. Or put differently, how little is enough? So can we basically cheat by just giving you enough of these cues? So to investigate this, we used a navigational search task and compared four different interfaces. On the left, people just use the controller, the trackpad of a Vive controller, and physically rotate it. And so there's no body-based center information about translation. The Navi chair is a seated interface where people sit on the swapper chair and we track their head position and use this to determine the uh, virtual velocity. So basically, you simply have to lean in the direction you want to go, and then you go there. And the Navi board is a bit similar. But we also put people on this wooden platter. So they actually take their shoes off and uh, surrounding the wooden platter is a softer material. So you always have haptic feedback where the center is. So you can always easily come back to that. So it's a basically a leaning stepping interface. So again, you get uh, additional vestibular and proprioceptive cues compared to just using the controller. And finally, as a kind of the gold standard, we used free space walking and a four by four meter area. So we have full translational body-based sensory cues. And to do this, we used an exponential velocity control model. So basically you can navigate very precisely and smoothly and slowly if you want, but for larger distances, you can also go quite fast. And we have an idle zone in the center where we basically just have one-to-one -one, uh, natural tracking. So let me give you an example. So people put on a head mounted display and in the environment, they had the task to find eight hidden objects, hidden blue balls, in, hidden in 16 
different boxes and they're always randomized per participant. So the task is to basically gradually build up uh, your spatial representation, your situational awareness while you're trying to look for these objects. And as you see, there's not a lot of landmarks. Actually, there's no landmarks at all. So you really have to spatially update and uh, use path integration to figure out where you are. So you collect these objects by touching them with the controller. And then you have to remember which of these boxes you've already uh, been to. And it turns out that's actually quite difficult. And we made sure that people could not really cheat by using any external QS global landmarks. And we restricted this to a four meter era. So once you traveled outside of that, there was a bit of a sound feedback. So let's look at one trial in action. So on the left, you see a top down view that of course the participant didn't see. So initially they are pretty good at trying to find the first few targets looking around. And you can see it's, it's a fairly fast paced task. So people really try and do this very quickly. And what you notice is the, the further into the task people are, the harder it really gets to find the remaining few items that you need to collect. As you also see that people use these idle zone, the free space, uh, uh, so the, uh, the idle zone in the center where we have one-to-one -one tracking to just do minor adjustments and then step outside to go faster. And it can be quite difficult. So. This task was really designed to make sure that people could not cheat by using any global landmarks or uh, allocentric representations uh, that, where they would get feedback on that. But they really have to gradually build up their mental representation of this environment just used uh, based on path integration. So it's a task that combines spatial updating, spatial awareness, situational awareness, and uh, path integration. So we pursued a couple of different research questions. Our first question was really, well, okay, how much translational information do you really need for efficient VR locomotion? So this, how much do you really need to have optimal performance? So what we predicted is that walking would perform best, followed by the standing uh, leaning best interface, the Navi board, followed by the sitting one, and then the controller. What we saw was slightly different. So the controller, as predicted, re yielded the worst performance. But the Navi chair, Navi board, and walking all yielded almost the uh, same performance, at least not statistically different. So there was a clear performance improvement for all the more embodied interfaces. And we found a similar data pattern in the distance travel. So both the time to completion and distance travel was quite drastically and significantly reduced. There was a similar trend in the amount of revisits to the boxes, but no clear data and the number of balls fall, found before they had the first revisit. So what you found that the Navi chair and Navi board yielded performance that almost matched the real walking performance, which was quite promising. Our second research question was whether these more embodied locomotion interfaces might actually help to reduce motion sickness. So the idea behind that is that I mean, we know that the sensory cue conflict between visual cues and vestibular and other cues uh, can really contribute to motion sickness, especially if the visual cues tell you you're moving, but your vestibular proprioceptive cues tell you you're not. This really contributes to motion sickness. So the idea of these leaning-based interfaces is that you provide yourself with at least a little bit of vestibular cues in the right direction. And the question was whether that might already be enough to help reduce motion sickness. So we predicted that walking would perform best because we have full uh, physical motion cues. So basically not much of a vestib uh, vis visual vestibular cue conflict at all, followed by the link based interfaces and worst performance for the controller where you don't really have any vestibular uh, cues matching the visual cues. And this is kind of the data pattern that we indeed found. So walking and Navi board performed best, a controller performed worst, and the Navi chair was kind of in between. And we observed similar data patterns for the other SSQ subscales in terms of nausea, disorientation, and ocular motor issues. So clearly the Navi board and walking significantly reduced motion sickness, which is quite promising. Now our third research question was about the learnability of these new interfaces. So you can imagine if people have to learn a new interface like the a leaning based interface, Navi board and Navi chair, none of our participants had ever tried these out before. You could imagine that this actually could increase the cognitive load quite a bit. So to assess that, we used the NASA task load index and asked people 
to report this. What we predicted is that the walking and the controller would perform best and the, both of the leading interfaces would perform equally worse. However, quite surprisingly, because all our participants had a lot of experience in uh, uh, using all kinds of different controllers, game controllers, and so on, but still the controller performed actually worst in terms of task load, walking best as predicted, and now we checked, now we board were kind of in between. And we found this similar pattern for most of the subscales of the NASA TLX. So Navi board and walk-in significantly reduced task load compared to the handheld controller, which is quite promising. So what can we conclude? So I mean, as predicted, walking really performed best at the gold standard, as predicted. But the leaning-based interfaces uh, yield performance levels that were pretty much similar, especially for the Navi board, so the standard ver standing version. Whereas the controller really performed first, so it really did the highest sickness, highest task difficulty, and highest task completion times. So, in summary, we can tentatively conclude that body-based information from a leaning-based interface might actually suffice for a cost-effective alternative to actual walking in virtual reality, without adding much cognitive load or increasing motion sickness. Of course, you might wonder, well, okay, I mean, we really need to test whether that generalizes or not. And this is indeed something we're uh, currently doing in the lab together with other colleagues out there, of course. So this is an online presentation. So definitely feel free to reach out to me and my colleagues if you have any questions, any feedbacks. And as I still have a little bit of time left, I'd actually like to talk about some of the ongoing research a little bit. So indeed, we were quite interested in seeing whether other locomotion tasks might also be improved by these leaning-based interfaces. So how about a reach a target task or as you can see here, um, that's Abraham, the student who's running the task, uh, has, is navigating through different targets and they get increasingly smaller. So the task is getting increasingly harder. And the task is to do that as fast and accurate as possible. Or a path following task, we have to navigate a path that becomes increasingly narrow. So again, the task difficulty is increasing over time or a kind of a racing task that's basically a dynamic obstacle avoidance task. We have to do this. So for all of these, we found a clear improvement when you use the leading based interface. Here we call it the head joystick because literally we are just tracking the, the head position. So using the tracker that you already have. We also track the chair to compensate in case people would actually move the chair, but it's not necessarily needed. Um, and the following the pass, again, the score is a lot higher uh, with the head joystick than real rotation. So real rotation is when they use the controller to translate and physical rotations uh, for virtual rotations. And similar uh, benefit for the overall driving score. And if you ask about the overall usability, even though most people were quite familiar with using handheld controllers, they still rated the head joystick at more usable overall. So again, that's quite promising. But now you might wonder, well, how about flying? I mean, is there a way we could extend these leaning-based interfaces into 3D? And I mean, there is a lot of amazing interfaces out there for flying. One of my favorite ones is probably uh, the birdly, which really can give you quite embodied sensation of flying, I guess like a bird, nobody really knows how that feels like, but it's a very compelling embodied interface, but it's it's a bit costly, so it costs more than $100,000. So again, we were wondering, is there a way to make this more affordable, I mean, a much more affordable, especially without any extra cost? So we extended the idea of a head joystick for, to flying. And here in this task, the participant is basically flying through these tunnels in the sky. So it's kind of a waypoint navigation task. In a way, again, they become increasingly difficult. And you also need to control all three translational plus uh, rotational yaw degree of freedom almost simultaneously. So it's quite a, a challenging task. And what you observed again is that the overall usability was rated higher for the leaning based interface compared to the gamepad, even though most people were quite familiar with the gamepad. And the distance from the path, so kind of the, the distance error was also a lot lower for leaning based interfaces. And the motion sickness uh, between so uh, pre post trial was also not much increased for leaning based, but quite a lot increased for the gamepad. So overall, this is quite promising. So to conclude, 
the benefits of lean-based interfaces seem to generalize at least to some different tasks, including ground-based tasks like reaching the target, path following or maneuvering while avoiding dominant obstacles, and 2D and flying. So that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention, and you can reach us at ispacelab.com. Thanks.